It's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, chemistry PhD and lover of bath bombs. Bath bombs are tons of fun and they recently turned 30 years old, so I thought I'd make a video talking about the science behind bath bombs. Have you ever wondered how a bath bomb works, what's in it and why does it fizz? This is the video for you. If you like this sort of video, click the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. If you need to buy a bath bomb, you probably think of Lush, and that's for a really good reason. Bath bombs were invented in 1989 by one of Lush's co-founders, Mo Constantine. She wanted to introduce luxurious ingredients to the already pretty awesome bath time experience. She was inspired by Alka-Seltzer tablets, a fizzing hangover cure, and the first bath bomb also came in tablet form. Soon the Blackberry bath bomb emerged and this was shaped like a literal bomb. Lush's aesthetic became more stripped back and with the discovery of 3D printing, we get bath bombs in tons of different shapes. So what exactly is in a bath bomb? There are two components that make a bath bomb fizz, an acid and a carbonate base. For example, in Lush's bath bombs, there's citric acid, which is found in citrus fruit, but usually made synthetically, and sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. To make it pretty and smell good, there are also pigments and fragrances. There are also sometimes other ingredients added to make your skin feel nice, like oils and butters. All the ingredients get mixed together and then you put it into a mold. Press the two halves of the mold together, not too hard, and then wait 24 hours. Then you can take the mold apart and you have your bath bomb. The fact that the acid and the base are solid are really important in making the bath bomb. If you know the volcano experiment with vinegar and baking soda, you'll know what happens when the acid and carbonate base are wet. It fizzes straight away. That's because the acetic acid in the vinegar is ionized. That means that the hydronium ions in the acid can collide with the hydrogen carbon ions in the base to produce carbon dioxide gas, which we see as fizzy bubbles. But in the bath bomb, the citric acid is unionized and intact. Until water comes along and frees the ions, they're stuck in place and they can't react. When we add water, then they can mix at a microscopic level and produce gas. The fizzing means that the bath bomb disperses faster and combined with the heat from your bath water, this helps the fragrance fill the air. This is also why you should keep your bath bombs in a dry place, so probably not just in the open in the bathroom. Moisture in the air can make the acid in the base react prematurely and so you run out of carbon dioxide by the time you put it in your bath. So you might be wondering, isn't baking soda bad for your skin? It's high pH, doesn't that disturb your skin and make it easier for bad bacteria to get a foothold? Well, the fizzing reaction is actually also a neutralization reaction. That means that we have our high pH baking soda reacting with a low pH acid, and together they combine to form a mixture that has an intermediate pH. Since the basic bath bomb was invented, there's been a few other extra cool inventions as well that go a bit beyond your basic bath bomb. For example, Lush filed a patent in 2014 for a bath bomb with distinct layers. There are also jelly bombs which contain sodium alginate, and these dissolve in your bath water to form lumps of jelly which slowly dissolve a bit later so that you don't have globs stuck to your skin. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment letting me know what else you want me to talk about. You can also follow me on Instagram and check out my blog for more beauty science. See you next time.